That is so vampiric, crazy ass capitalist shit. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my gosh. And it just is like giving me a headache. It's making me irritable the way it's written and the way people talk. I was gonna try to keep reading, but my attention span is so poor lately. And you know what y'all, this is a safe space for slow readers. And I'm like really exhausted, but also like really sad. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're gonna do a reading vlog, you guys. My first ever reading vlog. Um, and in this reading vlog, we are going to be reading a bunch of feminist books I got at the thrift store. Hell yeah. We're gonna go through what all of the books are first and then, then we will check back in as I finish each book. Okay, the one I am reading currently, and I'm almost done, I've got about uh, 50 pages left, is Reasonable Creatures by Katha Pollitt. It is, it came out as a collection of essays that were all written around the 80s and the 90s, so it is a little dated so far, um, but the points are still pretty relevant. So we'll talk more about it once I finish it so I can collect all my thoughts. But just letting you know, this book right now is five stars must read. The next one on the list that we're gonna be reading this week is an even older book called In a Different Voice by Carol Gilligan. It is funny because actually in the book Reasonable Creatures, she has mentioned already A Vindication of the Rights of Woman and this book. Um, in Reasonable Creatures, she mentions a lot, a lot of feminist texts that were out at the time and were like big in feminist academia. Um, but I don't know none of that. So it was just like, whoa, I'm about to read this one next. Sounds like this one might not be as good, but we will get into it. It's called You Don't Have to Like Me. Um, Essays on Growing Up, Speaking Out, and Finding Feminism by Alida Nugent. Uh, I saw the cover and I was like, that is an interesting cover. Let me check this one out. And it's pretty short and it's another like essay collection. So yeah, I don't really know. I don't know much about it, but I am very interested. So we shall see. All right. The next one is one, a, a newer one. Um, and I have heard people talk about this one a lot. It's called Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gay. Uh, I think this maybe is another collection. They're all collections. <laughs> Uh, surprise, surprise, a lot of feminist books seem to be essay collections, but I'm very, probably most excited for this one because it's newer and a lot of people talk about it and I don't really know anything about it. So, so I am going to go read some more of this and try to finish it tonight and I will update you on my thoughts. All right. update. We have finished Reasonable Creatures. Uh, it is tabbed to hell. Um, I will give you a full debrief in the next clip, but I did want to mention that we finished this one and we have started in a different voice. We are one chapter in. We'll try to finish this one tomorrow, but we are done reading for tonight and we're gonna play some Tears of the Kingdom and watch some H3 and I'll see you in the next clip. Bye!
so we have finished Reasonable Creatures by Katha Pollitt. And as you can see, we have all these tabs. Can you see? Maybe? Sort of. Um, totally like the most tapped book I've ever read. This is a great way to start this reading vlog um, after Vindication of the Rights of Woman, um, which the name of this book is a reference to that um, Mary Wollstonecraft has a line where she says, I wish to see women neither heroines nor brutes, but reasonable creatures, which is what this is named. So kind of cute call out, shout out to Miss Mary. Um, this is an essay collection of essays written from like the early 90s to the late 90s. Um, and it covers a range of topics from abortion, surrogacy, male violence, uh, and lots of other like generic feminist things. I think it would be very good for like beginner feminists. Um, the only place where it loses a 0.5 of the rating is because it was written in um, like ranging from times in the 90s and it's in like essay format. A lot of sections are like direct call outs to current events of the time, which is no longer relatable or relevant to a modern reader. Like, I don't know the names, like, I don't know these people she's calling out because they're no longer relevant or the situation is so old that no one talks about it anymore. Um, but that is basically the only place it loses any stars. The first and probably most important quote you're going to want to hear is, for me to be a feminist is to answer the question, are women human? With a yes. It is not about whether women are better than, worse than, or identical with men. And it's certainly not about trading personal liberty, abortion, divorce, sexual self-expression, for social protection as wives and mothers, as pro-life feminists propose. It's about justice, fairness, and access to the broad range of human experience. It's about women consulting their own well-being and being judged as individuals rather than as members of a class with one personality, one social function, one road to happiness. It's about women having intrinsic value as persons rather than contingent value as a means to an end for others, fetuses, children, the family, and men. So she also talks a lot about abortion and abortion rights. And obviously it is a little different when she's writing this in the 90s because it was legal then, um, but it is less so now. Isn't that so stupid? That's crazy ass shit, y'all. We're going backwards in time. Um, but it was still like a big debate. It was legal, but it was a big debate. It was supported by the Supreme Court at the time, but it was still a big debate. So something she talks about that I thought was like really eye-opening, and I am definitely guilty of doing this, is she talks about how pro-life people claim that it's about a woman's convenience, and that's the only reason she doesn't want to have a baby, is because it's inconvenient. Um, and so the natural response to that can sometimes be going to the other extreme where we're saying, well, what about rape victims? What about incest victims? What about babies who will kill the mother? Um, and that, by doing that, those things are all important, obviously, but by doing that, we're conceding ground that only those extreme fringe cases have the right to an abortion when it should be every woman's right no matter the reason you don't have to be raped to have to to want an abortion you don't have to be a teenager to want an abortion you don't have to be uh like poor to want an abortion but those are things that we have to highlight because they are in such a opposite extreme claiming that we're murdering babies so obviously the natural response is to jump to the other extreme which is well what about these victims of horrendous crimes whereas people who just don't want to have a baby because they don't want to have a baby right now is a valid reason to get an abortion you do not have to have a baby 
that you don't want to have. That's my, my personal opinion is there is no, you shouldn't ask a woman for a reason that she wants to have an abortion. If she wants to have an abortion, let that woman have an abortion. Okay, this is ridiculous. It is not your business. Mind your business. Something else she talks about that I had never really heard anywhere before. Um, I don't know if it's like a big topic anymore or if it is, I'm not aware of it, is about surrogacy and how it's a bit weird that we sell women's uteruses as like temporary homes for rich people who can't, who are infertile to have babies because these rich people don't want to adopt. Um, I was like, you know what? That is so interesting. It is definitely super manipulative and harming or potentially harming the poorest among us um, in a crazy way. I'm at like $30,000 or $40,000, however much you can make for being a surrogate, can be life-changing to poor women but the people who are paying for that baby that doesn't mean much to them so they don't really um, maybe they don't really understand where the manipulation is coming from but it's it's crazy i was like this is such a good point to me i sort of equated it to um selling plasma which i personally have done many times because i'm a brokey um that is so vampiric crazy ass capitalist shit that we literally sell our blood for like $50 to $100. Like I sit in a chair for an hour and a half and be drained of my blood for $50. That's crazy, bro. Why can't we just be like paid a livable wage? Why is it housing free? Why is it healthcare free? It's insane. So yeah, I sort of equated that to surrogacy in my mind because obviously sometimes surrogacy is a good thing and is not harmful but you can see how it could be, how it is manipulative if you're targeting poor women who would jump at the opportunity to sell their body for nine months, risking their own health for life-changing money. So in this, she also talks a lot about um, male aggression and how men are treated differently than women, obviously, um, but she does have this really great line I'm gonna read to you as well. Um, she says, we need to stop thinking of male violence as some kind of freak of nature, like a tornado, because the thing about tornadoes is you can't do anything about them. Mic drop. So true. Maybe the thing she's most famous for is coining the term the Smurfette principle, which the Smurfette principle is, is when a group of male characters are accented by a lone female who is stereotypically defined. And the message of this principle is that boys are the norm, girls are the variation, boys are central, girls are peripheral, boys are individuals, girls are types, boys define the group, its story, and its code of values, while girls exist only in a relation to boys. So, yes, final thoughts are I loved it. Uh, 4.5 stars, as I mentioned. This is a great way to start this reading vlog. I for sure am recommending this to anyone interested. This is probably like a good intro feminism read. It covers pretty much every topic um, in a good way. Um, the only thing is maybe you won't understand a lot of the references and that that doesn't hurt your, your reading that much because um, you get the general principle of the thing and it's not like the whole thing is full of references, but there are certain essays that are very much call outs to other people that we in the modern day do not care about. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, great start. Hello. Um, so I just got out of the shower and I'm in my jammy jams and I'm about to have some lunch. Uh, but I do have some book mail that I wanted to open even though I can't read it yet because we're still reading in a different voice, which we're gonna try to finish today. We're gonna try so hard to finish it today. Um, last night I read another chapter and I am 60 pages in out of like 170. 
Um, and then I think the rest of the books will honestly be faster. So I can get to this book that we got in the mail. Uh, because I know what it is and I'm so excited. So here we go. We're just gonna, we're gonna open it. All right, are you guys ready for this? Dun, 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 dun. Oh my gosh, wow. Usually, I mean, not usually, but a lot of times books that you get from Amazon can come like damaged or not like perfect condition, but this is like perfect condition. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, this has 500 pages almost. Y'all, I've got to finish these feminist books so I can read this vampire. S maybe smutty? I don't know. There's a romance. Uh, this is gonna have to be in a different reading vlog, but I was just so excited. I wanted to show you guys. So yes, this has now officially been a great day. All right, y'all. I just wanted to give you a little update. We are currently on like day three of trying to read this book. I may be day three. I don't know. But we're only 80 pages in. We have like 100 pages left. It is so boring. I desperately want to DNF and move on, but I need to finish it, I feel. It's hard for me to DNF things. A few minutes later. Okay, y'all. I think we're gonna have to call it on this book. I read 10 more pages and it just is like giving me a headache. It's making me irritable the way it's written and the way people talk because um, it does have a lot of like interviews in it where she, Carol, is interviewing um, like people asking them questions. Also, a lot of the people, I think except for the, the part I'm on right now, she's interviewing women about their decision to have an abortion or to not have an abortion. So besides those interviews, the other interviews were with Harvard students. So it's like, great, very relatable. Carol, thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, I just don't really see the value in finishing this one. Um, I'm not enjoying it. I don't really think it's relevant still today, and it certainly isn't really lining up with any of my values, so I'm not even feeling like I'm being enriched from this experience. Also, to clarify, I think I might have mentioned in the last clip, I wasn't sure if she was a psychologist uh, because it doesn't say it anywhere on this book, but she is, so give the girl credit. She is, like, a psychologist, and she does know what she's talking about when she's talking about, like, um, theories of development and such. But, besides that point, I just don't think she has anything important to say. Um, and I think her points are kind of stupid, even for the time. It seemed like I did a little more research into it. Um, it seems that even at the time she got some hate, she was uh, mostly 99% of people thought this was a, like an academic smash success, awesome, great, good job, girlfriend. But then there were some people that were like, okay, where are your sources? Was this peer reviewed? This is not a great way to present these findings. Like, um, one study or one technique she uses earlier in the book that I actually did read is she uses the TAT, um, which I will throw up the full name, like, right here, because I'm not looking at it right now, and I don't know off the top of my head. But the TAT is where you show someone a picture of a scene, and you have them write down or describe to you what they think is happening in that scene. And it's sort of like the Rorschach uh, ink blots, where or like dream analysis, where it's not like a great base of science to go off of because you're relying on personal interpretation of the person answering the question and the interviewer reviewing that answer. Um, so I don't really think that's relevant to any like sci science based conversation sure that can be like your opinion or your theory or your personal interpretation 
but I don't really think it applies to all women or women as a whole. Another important thing maybe, because we talked about the Smurfette principle with uh, Katha Pollitt and how she sort of term, coined that term, the Smurfette principle, um, it seems as Carol Gilligan coined the term or the theory of the ethics of care, um, which basically says that women um, develop to have an ethics of care where they are more concerned with personal relationships and social hierarchy than men who develop to have an ethics of justice and they're more concerned with logic and the law and how things are supposed to be. Um, which I also think is kind of stupid because there's no biological reason for such a difference to to happen. It is kind of obviously a social response. So yeah, I just don't really see the point in finishing this. Um, I would rather move on to something different and I hope you can forgive me, but yeah, this is being DNF'd at, at page 91. And at page 91, it's getting a one star. Sorry, girlfriend. All right, so since we have given up on In a Different Voice, we are gonna go ahead and start in You Don't Have to Like Me essays on Speaking Out, Growing Up and Finding Feminism by Lita Nugent. This book came out in 2015. So I do have higher hopes because I'm not reading something that's 40 freaking years old. Sorry to the 80s and everyone from then. Sorry, girlfriend. It's okay, I forgive you. But anyway, I'm much, much more excited to start this. And this one looks like it'll be a much faster read. So we're gonna start this. I'll let you know how far I get. And peace out to the next clip. Bye -bye. All right, so another update. We are on page 87 of You Don't Have to Like Me. So far so good. It is super like fast. Um, I have like, there's like 200 pages I think. 200 pages and we're on page 80 something or 90 something. Um, so I was gonna try to keep reading but my attention span is so poor lately. And you know what y'all, this is a safe, space for slow readers. I was going to try to read all these books in a week, but I don't know if it's going to happen because right now I'm about to build a fort and then go to the store and get movie snacks because we're going to watch Ella Enchanted for the first time tonight. So yeah, I got to go get some snacks and a dinner and make a fort and I will show you our finished fort. And then I might read some more before dinner and... But I do need to play Tears of the Kingdom too, you know? So you gotta strike a balance between reading your book and playing your game. That's just how life is. So I will show you the fort once it's done because it's kind of cute and cozy and everyone should be making forts at all ages of their life. Okay, bye. This is, this is a British singer, Dan. Ollie Alexander. Oh, Ollie. Alright. Oh, I thought we were talking about Alan, who is also Okay, here. yeah, no. He's the chin guy. Yeah, why do you call him the chin guy? Look at his chin. Oh, he does have a fat chin. Whoa. He's got like an inbred chin. That's awesome. Another update, we have finished You Don't Have to Like Me by Alita Nugent. Um, <clears throat> I would say it's probably about a four star. I don't know if you can see my, my tabbies. Um, <clears throat> I would say it's a four star. It was pretty good. It was very fast. It was funny. Um, certainly more relatable than the uh, first two. 
Reasonable Creatures and Vindication, and obviously, I, since I didn't finish in a different voice, I guess that one doesn't really count. Um, but this one is told more um, like an autobiography, sort of, like her life and how she came to become a feminist and what it means to her. And she talks about other things as well besides feminism. She talks about um, being biracial. She talks about um, like sex. She talks about having male friends and having female friends and beauty and like a lot of different topics. Um, and I thought it was funny. It was like a super quick read. It's about 200 pages, 215 but it's written in such a way that it's like you're talking to someone, so it's pretty easy to read. Um, and yeah, I really liked it. The only reason it wouldn't be like a five star is because it's kind of dated, obviously. Um, it did come out in 2015, but there are a lot of like millennial references and vibes, which is not my generation, so I don't know, girl. It's just not my, it's not as relatable to me um, when you talk about things that are kind of hyper specific to people of a certain generation. So yeah, I like this one. Four stars. Pretty good. Next and last for this video, we're going to be reading Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. Okay, a little update. Um, I didn't do any reading today because I work. And then as soon as I got off work, um... We went to see Barbie, and I just got home, and I'm like really exhausted, but also like really sad. So I'm not really in the mood to read today. I think I'm just gonna like clean my face and play some Zelda and watch some H3 to make me feel a little happier. Because, I don't know, too many womanly emotions. You know how it is, girl? Uh, the movie was 10 out of 10, really good, so good, I, wow, my heart is just a little broken, but it was really good, I don't know, I'm just feeling it, I'm reading these, like, feminist books, and then watching this, like, super feminist movie that was also, like, really good, so my little heart is, I can't take so much of this, you know, anyway. I'll see you in the next clip, hopefully with a better update on our reading progress. Hopefully we can finish this freaking book soon. I feel like I've been doing this reading vlog forever now. Um, I cut my bangs yesterday. It's a little uneven, but it doesn't really bother me. It always sort of looks like this because then it starts to grow. It grows like really quickly and it won't look as bad. I don't know. That's the update for today. So. Bye. Making dinner? Um, how do you tell if an onion has gone bad? Do they stink? Do they smell? Maybe if I cut into it all now. I haven't had it that long, but... It's been in there a minute, a few weeks. I don't know, thought of the day. Also, oh my God, I'm wearing my Shrek shirt. Oh, I did not plan this. My Shrek shirt and thinking about onions. That is classic. Okay, I'll figure this out. I will figure this out. <laughs> I did finish Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gay. Um, I think, well here first, look at my little tabbies, so cute. Um, I think we're gonna put this at a 3.5. Um, there were some parts that I just didn't really resonate with. Some parts I skipped entirely, like not whole parts, but some pages I was like, oh my God, this is boring. Like, let's move past it. Um, yeah, so that's why it's going to get a 3.5. 
um, because I just feel like a lot of this book could have been cut and it still would have been good um, because her main point is very good and her main point is as the title suggests that it's okay to be a bad feminist as long as you're a feminist um, being a bad feminist is better than being no feminist at all because at least you're trying if you're a bad feminist at least you're trying to support women and uplift them rather than being an asshole on the completely non-feminist side um but she says like it's okay to not be like super knowledgeable about the history of feminism or the literature or the leaders like it's okay if you don't know all the answers if you're not the perfect feminist like if you love men if you take your husband's last, last name if you're a housewife blah 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 all these things that we see as traditionally not feminist um she's like it's okay as long as you are prescribing to the core ideal which is to support women and believe that they are equal human beings then that's okay. It's okay to be a bad feminist. I don't know. I don't think it hit as hard for me as maybe it does for other people because I didn't really connect to or relate to most of the stories or points she was trying to make. Uh, there were really good parts that I really, really liked and really enjoyed and she makes a lot of very, very good points about like the weird jokes that people make about like essay and such. Um, and I loved all that and I loved when she was talking about abortion and such but yeah some of the more personal anecdotes I didn't really see as relevant um yeah that's my that's my rating 3.5 still pretty good you might like it more than me and the core premise of being a bad feminist is very good but it's a 3.5 all right to do a final wrap up of all these books um, we did start with Vindication, which I didn't read in the vlog, but it was the context in my brain. So we're going to mention it just for mentioning's sake. Then we got to Reasonable Creatures, which I think is my favorite. Um, yeah, this one's going to be 4.5. I'm going to recommend this one to you. Uh, I thought it was funny. It was more relatable to me than the other two were. Um... And I thought she made very good points and she made them very well. Uh, next was In a Different Voice, which I did not finish. I got to page like 80 something and then I was like, this is bullshit. I'm over it. Um, I just, I should have known because it says psychological theory, but when I picked it up, I didn't read that part. But I just, it's old. It's in the 80s. The science isn't really what we do today um and that kind of makes the whole thing irrelevant to me like she's basing a lot of her findings on small sample sizes groups that don't apply to a larger population and using the tat as like a valid test to base a whole developmental theory off of is a bit odd to me personally so yeah, that's why we didn't bother with this one. Maybe someday in the future, if I get, like, super interested in her theory, I'll go back to it. But I just don't think I will. Um, next, we did You Don't Have to Like Me, Essays on Growing Up, Speaking Out, and Finding Feminism. Um, which got about a four star. This one was very good. Uh, and then we did Bad Feminist, of course. Which, this one came out after Bad Feminist, but was inspired by Bad Feminist. So I just sort of felt like I was getting the same point twice when I did read this one, which is unfortunate to this one, but um, You Don't Have to Like Me was pretty good. Uh, I, it was 100 pages shorter than Bad Feminist, and I felt like it read a little easier. Um, it felt more like a conversation, and her points were more concise, I thought. Um, so I do think I like that one a little bit more. But I, I four, four stars for this one and 3.5 for Bad Feminist. But yeah, that, that is going to complete our reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed. Um, let me know what I should read next. Um, let me know if you decide to read any of these, any of your thoughts. Um, I think The Scum Manifesto is at the top of my list next. Just because I just finished my second rewatch of American Horror Story Cult with my boyfriend because he's never seen them. So I'm making him watch all of them. 
Um, and it was a big plot point, the Scum Manifesto. And it's a real thing you can really read. So I'm actually very interested in it. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Got it memorized. Got it memorized. Um, and I will see you tater tots. Or just taters. You don't want to be tater tots. You're either taters or you're tots. I haven't worked it out yet. I'll see you later. Tater. Bye.